part. Oh, I can't. I can't stop until copyright strike. until. Oh no! You're right. Can't do that. Shoot! All right, hold on. <laughs> Remix. <laughs> can't copyright me. All right, so we're playing uh, Symphony of the Night. Apparently, now. listen. Here's the deal. Okay, so I've talked about this before. My sleep schedule is bonkers, all right? It's and, ridiculous. Um, I took a nap earlier, which means that I'm all fired up for no reason. Are you recording? Yeah. On Netflix? Uh-huh. There's a, um, there's a category watched by Buster Blue. Yeah. And it's all, like, high anxiety. They, they have those for every character. <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Yep. That's the best. What are we going to name our character? Oh god, um, I'm usually really good at these. Let's call him, uh, Nathan. Nathan? Is there enough spaces for Nathan? There usually is not. Even in Pokemon, like, I'm, I have to do, like, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, and that's it. There that's is. all I can do. That's how you spell Nathan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nathan! Ow! Okay, so we're still recording. Lol. And we're here with the cat. I think she's leaving. Alright, we're leaving. Okay. <laughs> he says subtly, but hinting. <laughs> Sorry, gosh. Anyway. Here's so your sleep schedule is fucking bonkers. I'm just gonna rant for a minute. Yeah. Because Well, this this cutscene's gonna take about a minute and a half, so you have to understand. go for it. The energy level right now is so insane that It is nine o'clock at night on a Saturday night. And um, um we just spent the last eight or nine hours watching Star Wars. We had a big six, marathon. Three, I got there three films, one, two hours. Two hours and change each film. Well, yeah, and then there was time in between that we all and we did had nothing. time in between. That's a beautifully untextured polygon mess. Yep. Thanks, PlayStation. Nineteen ninety-four. <clears throat> what up, Bat six. Sprites? Something like that. Anyway, so we watched. A... No, we didn't. We did not watch the end of the night. That's not what we watched. We watched the three older Star Wars. The original trilogy, which we've talked about previously. Unfortunately, I Have still we have talked about it. See on the show. Well, I think the last time we talked about it was when the Star Wars, um, the new Star Wars trailer came out, and you were, we? you were just like, I love all Star Wars all of a sudden. You remember that? Yes, you're right. <laughs> we did kind of talk about it. Because my favorite Star Wars vi- movie is episode one. Like, I just can't. Oh, you're fucking insane. <laughs> I can't get over it. Like, I watched, I, like, I fell asleep during um, Empire Strikes Back tonight, and Mike was like, it's a masterpiece. I was like, yeah, it's my least favorite of all. What? <laughs> You did not say this it's at the true. time. It's true. And and uh, amazingly enough, Emily, she was there. She was there with us too. And um, she had not seen Empire or Return before, so she <coughs> finally saw both of them. And then she said Return was her favorite. And I almost immediately disowned her <laughs> um, because it's also Rebecca's favorite. And uh, I don't okay. get it. Well, you know, Return is good. It is good, but it's also the first clue of what we're going to get with Attack of the Clones, right? Um, and I just kind of realized that tonight too, watching it. Like that's what happened. Yeah, I, I was I was impressed that. In okay, the... you have you have to watch those. Die, Too bad we can't really hear it because it's. So, but the the voice acting is. Super... I'm gonna turn it up so that we can actually hear it. This is a famous scene. <clears throat> oh damn. Check out that what script. I, I just like how he's just. <laughs> what is a man? <laughs> I love it. I'm just amused that, like, dude walks into a castle and is like, okay, I'm gonna kill the owner. And the owner is nine feet tall. And the owner was so bored of this conversation that he was, like, lounging on one of his hands during this. So this can't end well. Like, uh, whatever is about to happen, if we kill him, this is, like, vile in Mega Man X. There's no way we're getting away from this in peace, without it being in pieces. <laughs> um, so I will explain a little bit of backstory here. Um, Symphony of the Night is a um, sequel, technically, to Rondo of Blood, which is an older... Never even heard of that. It's, a, it's another company <laughs> game that was on... I think there was a SNES version, but it was on MSX. Um, so not many people played it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is, it's, a, it's a solid game. 
Um, this is actually the end of that game. You uh, you are actually playing the end of Rondo of Blood. You're replaying the end. Technically, yeah. So the you you beat him at the end of the game. Dracula, yeah. And then we're just happening to replay it. That's curious. Because it's kind of setting up what's going to happen. I in get this it. Game. Yeah, that that's neat. I like that idea. So you. Oh wait a second. Are we at, like full power right now? Is that how this works? We we're full power, full weapons, and then he takes them all away. That sounds familiar. Um, kind of. But this isn't the character you play in Symphony of the Night. This is Richter Belmont. Uh huh. What happens to him? You get wrecked. I mean, it'll explain. Let's be honest. The, the whole point of this is to explain what happened to Richter. Oh, kind of. okay. I was gonna say like, out of anyone here, I know nothing, and our viewers probably know everything. So yeah, probably <laughs> not really an issue. For spoilers. Oh shoot. Turns into Baphomet and takes us to the Sky World. What in the hell? Suddenly you're turning into a monster too? Weapon. Oh, I thought you turned into a monster. That was gonna be cool. That's some serious sprite design. Why was he easier? That doesn't make any sense. When you fight yeah, yeah, Sigma Stage 2, he's way harder. Not so easier. I will explain that you can die there, but what happens is you fall down and then Maria, who's another character, comes and revives you and then you're immortal. And then you Word. just beat his ass until he dies. That could have been cool. Why it's pretty cool. see that? Because your stats are less in the real game if you die. Mm. So I wanted our stats to be kind of okay. Interesting. Your best stats are if you don't get a sub-weapon. You know how you use the cross thing? Yeah. That's one of the sub-weapons. Yeah. I got that, so my stats are going to be a little less than they could be. This seems arbitrary. How do you, how do you know as a first-time player you don't. not... Ugh, God, that's annoying. But it's not, it's not like... But that would make you... me want to reset the entire game if I was gimped from the beginning. But you're not gimped. Like, even the lowest level alcohol card is okay. Mm. Um... So now it's explaining that, you know, Richter went and killed Dracula that night, and then he disappeared in the castle, and you no one's seen him since. And uh, the castle disappeared, because that's what happens. But then yeah. it comes back, and now you're going to play as Alucard, because the castle appeared, and you're going to go there to fight Dracula. So, let me understand this. Mm -hmm. I know Alucard is Dracula backwards. Yes. No surprises there. Mm -hmm. Is Alucard... Actually, Dracula? No. No. He is Dracula's son. Aha. Uh -huh. So he's going to go kill his father? Yes. Is this Star Wars? Are we just having a Star Wars day? <laughs> Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> I wonder how much I could connect this to Star Wars. I bet you could if you really tried. So, well, <clears throat> Dracula isn't the Emperor. I just I mean, Dracula would be the Emperor, which is not Darth Vader. I can't let us get away from the fact that my ranking of the Star Wars movies is as, as follows. Really fucking weird. One, two. One, two. Four. Six, three, five. <laughs> You're just trolling. Right I'm now. not. Yes, you are. <laughs> First of all, there's no way that two could be near the near top of your list. It is. Attack of the Clones. It's so good. The sand. It's so, it's so good. Coarse. It it just gets everywhere. Listen, you're coming at it from a filmmaker's perspective, from a scriptwriter's perspective, from a director's perspective. That's fine. I understand the time. <laughs> I'm coming at it from every perspective other than a crazy person who watches movies sometimes. <laughs> I, see, I understand. I understand. I understand how technically perfect Empire Strikes Back was. Like, I get it. I really do. But at the same time, like, I don't know what it is, but when I watch the second epi uh, episode two of Star Wars, I'm just like, this is massive battles on grand scale, and I just can't overstate how much I love those. Anytime there's a massive battle that you're just like, I can't believe there's this many <laughs> entities on screen right now. It's like when I was watching Serenity at the very end, where there's this giant oh, battle between Reaver Reavers battle. and, oh God, and they... So cool. I'm just like, oh my God! And then you watch... Um, uh, you watch the new version of um, Ender's Game and there's so much going on it's like the whole screen has enemies and um, that movie was pretty good it, uh, just I I love I, kinda, I, I enjoyed it I, you, I didn't you, like the end I thought the end kind of ruined it well I think it was true to the book I assume I, I haven't read the book I, I haven't read it either from what I've heard it actually kind of combines the first two books mm -hmm. as far as like how it ends well, I, think it, I, think it, I don't know though I'm, I can't speak to it because I'm yeah. not sure but so like for example you taught me this that you know most trilogies are Okay, man versus giant, then man versus many giants with team, then man's team and their teams versus all the teams of evil. Like, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger every time. Like, mm -hmm. And I love this the climaxes of those trilogies where it's just a massive brawl between... Battle of Five Armies? I just... I, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't, oh I haven't so seen... Bad. <laughs> I haven't seen the new uh, trilogy. Yeah. But I love when we get to that climax of just like, 
absolute chaos of a battlefield on screen. All right, so take a break for a second. Yeah. This is Alucard. And here's my equipment. It's very pretty. It's all like the best equipment in the game, right? It's awesome. You lose all this. I lose all of this right now. It sucks. Is this why people love this game? It's because it's like tricksy like that? Um, (laughs) Oh, well, word, we're fighting death. Okay. What is your business here? Alucard. Some more glorious uh, voiceover here, which we can't hear because we're professionals. We don't want to double up our audio. Um, no, I would say the reason this game is so loved is, um, first of all, before before this, Castlevania was a stage-based game. So you'd play a level, you get through it, you go. That's to the such next an level, arbitrary right? theft of all of your stuff. Yep, it's what the now heck. I, now I punch. Punch, punch, punch. I'm, he did. He just. He literally was like, "You didn't agree with me, so I'm gonna take everything you have." Well, he was like, "What are you doing here, Alcar? You gonna go see your father?" And you're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna kill him." And he's like, "Oh, I can't let you do that." So he takes all your shit. That's really dumb. <laughs> uh, that's upsetting. Like that makes me not want to play. Like, but I, it's. But it's. You have to think of it. <laughs> um, it's almost like another version of the X thing, yeah. where in that game they show you what you could be. Yeah. In this game, they let you be let what you, you could be. be. Yeah. And then they make you build up from there. Yeah. I guess it's my loss aversion as a And you actually surpass human. that. Do which you? is similar to X, okay, too. Okay, that's important. Yeah. I needed to know that. You get to that point, and then you get better than you were when you started. It's like when Destiny did the reset. I was like, no, all my what stuff. Reset? Remember the beta reset? Oh, yeah. because like, Well, mm. that, that made sense, though. But it really didn't. The explanation uh, was, sure. there's see. so many things that we've done differently that we have to reset, and then they really didn't. Like, they really didn't. Like, I've, But I understand the idea of, like... Especially for the... Beta, maybe not so much. It made sense Alpha, why. I could see why you couldn't keep your character from the Alpha. I think we're at a stage now where betas are basically the first releases. They're just really buggy. When they leave them that open yeah. and everyone can play it, yeah, it basically is an early you know? release. So... It's a, it's a, it's a like, Project Greenlight. I was stuff. kind of okay with it. Anyway, so, again, like... Back to Star Wars. I hate, I hate to just be so <clears throat> dumb. Like, I know I'm wrong, for example. It's but so I can't bad. I can't help myself. <laughs> like, the original Star Wars is, I love them for what they are, but they're now showing their age. Like, every time I watch them, it's a little more hard to watch. The originals? Them. Yeah. I was just talking to Emily about this on the way home, and it made me feel bad, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, but watching those movies today, I was being far more critical sure, than I usually me too. am. Yeah. And I started to feel like, am I really, have I really seen these with nostalgia? Like, even all these years, watching it with nostalgia, because. And it might be because of the versions we're watching to have so much extra shit added well, to them. That it really makes it clashing. Me. It doesn't bother me. I know it, it's it doesn't wrong really and ugly, yeah. but you know, it's more just like for fans to be annoyed about. Um, but I was watching them and just I was watching shot composition. I was listening to dialogue more mm-hmm. closely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just there were a lot of little things I was like, I feel like I could do this at home, <laughs> <laughs> like. It's just little things about it the that first just really hit, got me. Episode 4, I didn't realize how amateur it was, in a way. Like, okay, yeah. no one will ever argue that the scope and the mastery of visual effects and everything was just incredible. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, I didn't realize how much of a little kid character um, and one-dimensional Luke was. He yeah. was, like, he was so... Like believing in the good, and he had no idea. Like he's he's ripe for one of those stories where he joins the Rebel Alliance, and the Rebel Alliance is just as bad and corrupt as the Empire. Like he would just he would cease to exist as a character. Cool, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like because he's so just like one dimensional in that sense. And you know when you really read, excuse me, listen to what he's saying, it's like no, we have to find the princess because she's the princess. She's the princess. Like ah, come on. (laughs) But uh, the first time I saw Star Wars was you know. I don't know, early 90s. So it's not like there's that much nostalgia, I believe, right? We're not talking about people who were in their 20s in the release date era of right. Star Wars. But I mean, even even age is something that scales, you know? Mm. Something that we experience, like look at fucking um, Dragon Ball Z or like Power Rangers. Yeah. Those are awful. They're <laughs> really bad. Yeah. But we fucking love them because 15 years ago we watched all of it and we yeah. ate it up and it was amazing. <clears throat> yeah. Um... Well, Star Wars like, can be the same way, where we were, you know, we were, you know, t- ten or under years old, and yeah, now it's this thing that we just remember. I guess with everything. So, for example, I was wa- I watched a uh, honest movie trailer review, whatever, of Star Trek. I love those. The second one, yeah, and it was so much more critical than I was. Like, I watched 
What? <laughs> I watched Star Trek. Then I watched Star Trek 2. And then the next day, I watched Star Trek and Star Trek 2. <laughs> like, I, I love them so much, I just could not get over it. How many save points are there? And um, it was just crazy to me. They were able to point out how, like, they're basically the same movie and how, like, it's basically... You know, yeah. the female characters are one-dimensional in the second film. It's like, ah, no, I really like these films. Um, Speaking of like what you just said, that that's something that I had going through my mind when I was looking at these stories. When I was trying, I was starting to doubt myself. I was like, am I being too ingrained with the way movies are now? Because mm. what I was thinking when we were watching the end of uh, Return, um, I was watching you know like Luke and Vader fight, and I was like. All I want from this is to see Luke get a real prequel lightsaber battle in Episode Seven, because the lightsaber fights mm. in Five and Six, while they're right. they're great, they're yeah. so yes. dated. It's, and that's why they're when I not think crazy about awesome. when I think about like Episode Two or Three, they it's just that. like yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog speed insanity when it comes to the choreography and things like that. And I love it. And it's in, especially when you think of, like this is a terrible example, but especially when you think of like the Yoda battle. Like now that you know. <laughs> it can be that insane. You want it to be that insane. But the reason I brought up Star Trek is because J.J. Abrams has done no wrong in so long that, like, I can't help but believe Star Trek, or the next Star Wars, is going to be just perfect. Like, it will have flaws. It will have, like, things that you can critique. But if it's as fun as I remember all the other ones to be the first time I watched them, it's going to be just exactly what I wanted. Um... I'm really yeah. I'm really psyched for seven because I feel like it's going to have it's going to have that feeling, <clears throat> and it's going to be a well done movie like the original trilogy, mm-hmm. but it's going to have the updates that the new trilogy had, and that's all, that would be great. And I think it's if gonna that's be all that happens. I great. wish that's what the prequels were, but it was. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> See, everybody was critiquing, um, you know, the the prequel trilogy after like ten years had passed. They were saying things like Star Wars isn't about. Um, the Galactic Senate and politics and romance. It's about the Wild West. And I get that. But, but I don't even think that's true necessarily. Like, I loved I loved you, the political side. When you watch uh, New Hope, they talk about that kind of stuff, but it, they do it in a much more pronounced way. Mm-hmm. Like that scene when they're, you have this Imperial Council, they talk about how the Emperor just dissolved the Senate. So now he is the power. Like the regional mm-hmm. commanders are going to run their their territories, mm-hmm. and like that's how we're going to we're going to run by fear. We're not going to have a republic anymore. Yeah. And then they go into how you know Vader's ways are ancient and old, which are bullshit because that was only twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, that stuff is in there. Mm-hmm. It's just that when they did it in the prequels, it was so much. It was so much more heavy-handed yeah. and annoying that it just I it didn't work the right same but way. But I, I would argue in contrast that when they were saying things like, oh, we dissolved the Senate, that was it. Yeah. Like, you you literally just changed the entire political structure of the universe that, we, that we're aware of, and everybody's like, okay, cool. Like, that, that didn't have enough of a satisfactory um, conclusion to me. Like, everybody was like, more focused on the fact that we need to show how Vader is unique in his use of the Force. You know, let's just ignore the fact that the entire civilization just changed the way it's governed. I lose one intelligence by putting on sunglasses. <laughs> but I gain one defense. I have to say that, honestly, what I've seen from this game so far, I think it's one of those where, like, if you love this game, you love this game. I but love this game. But it's... I can, without a map, it literally looks... Okay. <laughs> I know the map, kind of, so I don't need to reference This it just much. looks like... Okay, so you're going into every room, hitting every object, and I do that. For yeah. example, anytime I play Pokemon, I talk to every single person in the entire world. And I touch every single item to see what happens. And that's fine. But there's only so much bandwidth my brain can handle when it right. comes to these things. And like this is a lot of rooms, and I feel like I would get lost really easily... So you got to tell me how your first playthrough was of this, not your million. Um, Were you yeah. just like, oh god, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, this is the third save room that I've seen in the last 30 seconds. Yeah, there's a lot of save rooms. And that's cool, but... And the only reason I really use them, like, I don't worry too much about saving, but it heals you too. Which is nice. Yeah. Because, like, especially early game, you don't have a lot of health. Yeah. You have to pick up these little heart things to increase it. So, you know, all this started because I slept through um, 
<laughs> episode five. Uh, oh yeah. Because my sleep schedule is backwards. So anytime that normal humans are awake, I'm asleep, and vice versa. So I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning just Actually because, and uh, at that point I'd been up for like 12 hours by the time we got into Rip, um, Empire Strikes Back. So I was like, all right, nap time. But then. The reason I was so excited as soon as this uh, show started was because afterwards, after we got through everything, um, I was talking to a friend who's going to be a roommate of mine soon, and we started getting every, uh, what in the world? We started hitting every important topic that I care about. So we started talking about games. We started talking about gyms. started talking about the gym. started talking about nutrition. And then I got over here, and I started arguing about nutrition again. And like, you want to get me fired up, let's talk about those topics. So we were talking about how... <laughs> Which is probably a dead horse because now Mike's like, all right, enough. Like we've talked about this like for an hour. Um, we were talking about how there's this um, idea that if you feed kids sugar and like rewards in the form of um, little treats, they'll, you know, you basically buy their attention. There is for more context to this like <laughs> topic, um, and I don't know how to talk about it without. Being specific, yeah. Being I understand. Specific. I guess what I mean is just that, like, I hate the idea, and this is me, like, this is this is kind of a life thing that yeah. I've always had. I hate the idea that food at all is a reward. Yes. Food, food should be an experience, I agree with that. Food should be uh, something that you do with family and friends, but it shouldn't be a reward, in my opinion, because it's too easy to turn that into... <sighs> A, a need and an addiction more than anything so for example it's like when people use alcohol it's like oh you know I had a really hard day at work so my reward is alcohol that means uh, yeah. that any time you have a hard day at work you're going to alcohol instead of something else and, you know, it's, and it's, it becomes too much of a habit which eventually could become an addiction and I just really believe super slow. that anything you put in your body the less of it you put in is probably better like so you know anything that you indulge unless in it's soiling. yeah unless it's soil or water you know like I, and it sounds extreme, but it's true. Like, you, is, th yeah. you really think about it. Like, um, even if you drank, and I'm waiting for this to happen, unfortunately, even if you drank, like, more soylent than you could, your body could handle, I don't think you could get poisoned by all the minerals, but it's technically feasible, um, right? Yeah, it could happen. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, you can get vitamin poisoning. Too much so, I mean, water all... can kill you. Yeah. You know? But Too much of anything can kill you. Like, <laughs> moderation, even in the most healthy thing, like yeah. Soylent, which theoretically is the absolute most healthy thing, healthiest mm -hmm. thing you could do, yeah. um, would be bad. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's too many calories, too. Well, yeah, that's true. And that's the thing, is, like, I, in, the more I study it, the more I realize that, like, food seems to be just a really, really big burden for most people. They don't know how to yeah. manage it. They don't know how to get it correctly. Well, it's, it's because... Right from the beginning, for most people, you're taught badly how to handle it. Yeah. And, um, you're just not taught at all, mostly. Yeah, It's just, this much. is what we've always done, so this is what we do. It's like, you're probably hungry, you should eat. Yeah, and, and if, and if you eat, you should, fill, you should fill your plate, and if you fill, fill your, your plate, plate, you should finish you it. You need to finish it, like, or else you're wasting it, and other people aren't eating. Not bad tenants, but bad when you... Better theories than in practice. I, I agree. And it's, it's like when I see people go to the gym, and I was explaining this to someone on personal training... She asked me. Okay, she... uh, side topic. <laughs> you notice that I hit all these landers and stuff when I'm going down. Yeah, and, stuff, oh, yeah. and they're just you're getting hearts. Yeah, I can't hold any more hearts. At 72 is your cap right now. You you max it up as you do so. That's weird. As you get, well, stop containers. hitting them then. But I just <laughs> it, that's what I mean. I always do it. Yep. And I always like I'll I will like drop this heart and I'll pass it and I'll go back and get it. Sure. Even though it's pointless. I know. I. That's what I mean. It's like, my and, brain would want to do that every time. And if we're going to have people watch us play this game, I need to not do that. Because <laughs> it's a waste of time. <laughs> well, technically, you're moving at the same speed. Generally, but that take that takes playthroughs of practice to yeah, avoid going right. out of the way to do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But I'm still doing it at all. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help yourself. Uh, so what I was saying was, you know, honestly, the way I look at it is that um, when I was explaining to this girl in personal training... She's like, well, how? What are the, what are the people here doing? Are they doing it correctly or are they not? I was like, they're not. So, for example, <clears throat> a lot of people don't know how to start going to a gym, and they don't want to start because it's easier to just put it off than it is to actually do something and, about it. I mean, there's there's a lot of reasons mm -hmm. people go to gyms. I mean, gyms are intimidating. Yeah. Oh yeah. I would be afraid to just go to a gym mm -hmm. randomly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because like, no one's taught anyone this is what you do there. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? And I'm super antisocial anyway, so it's like. 
the, the idea, which I know it's not fucking happening most <laughs> of the time, but the idea of like being there and not doing it right, and especially having someone come up to tell me that I'm not doing it right. Yeah. Oh, fuck. How did you... Oh, wow. Um, that would suck. I would feel terrible. Sure. Oh, yeah. And extremely awkward and... God, Here, anyway, there's here's what's so cool, is that like, you you are the norm. Like, there's only a small segment of the population that knows what they're doing when yeah. they go to a gym, and a much much smaller segment of that that actually is good at it. So, here's one of the things that they, you, you might not know: if you go to the gym and use a treadmill, you're wasting your time. That is insane to some people because they've always been taught, oh, if you need to lose weight, go for a run. I think I mentioned this last time, and if I have, I apologize. For example, if you go for a 20-minute run, you're burning 100 to 200 calories max. Yeah. That's a cookie, you know? Like, I'm not against (laughs) running, but it's mostly for the stamina and endurance, not for, like, losing weight or gaining muscle or anything like that. But if you think about it... It's like, I need need, need to be able to run, but that's its own skill. Standing on a treadmill, listening to an iPad, or potentially watching a TV show... And walking at a leisurely pace feels good mentally, but it does nothing physically. It makes you think that you're doing um, doing something good and making progress, but it's just you lying to yourself. And I hate I hate to sound so extreme, but I like to take things to um, logical ends yeah. in arguments just because it makes it easier to see a point or disagree with it. So, honestly, think about the last time that you saw somebody going to the gym that spends an hour or two on a treadmill, but it's a very slow pace. I mean it is it is actually pointless and I'll tell you why is because but uh, let me let me make a point I'm kind of I'm already arguing myself to the other side isn't it fun here's the point if you mentally say oh I went to the gym today yeah you automatically feel like you've earned something and most people if we go back to what we just talked about feel like they've earned more food and this is the vicious cycle that gets people into it's the same reason why some people own a gym membership and never go. It's because they're paying money, telling themselves that next week they'll go, but it just feels good to say that they have a gym membership. Now, finally, not to belabor the topic, but when you really think about it, I think it was the book Freakonomics that put together the idea that because people wear helmets, they're more risky on bikes Yeah. because they feel safe. And if you apply that same principle to the gym, people who feel like they're working out more even if they're not will potentially give themselves more of a cheat mode than they would normally so that's why i say it's a waste of time and literally not worth it is because the net positive that you're getting out of it is just feeling good not doing anything we go different ways so for example you know i'm planning to start uh personal training with mike and it's he's I'm going to murder him. Yeah, like you have to understand. I'm waiting for it. It's oh, it, we're meeting Maria. Uh, what up, girl? She's grown up since the Richter part. Although we didn't see it at the Richter part because I didn't die. <laughs> Was she a little kid? Yeah. Okay. She looks like a sprite, like a elf. <laughs> yeah, she kind of does. Well, look at her. She's it doesn't really really match tiny. her like her portrait either. Like yeah. the color of her dress and the portrait is like way darker and some dude. They should like, really deal with that. Yeah. We're playing this on a PS3, which means they've had, you know, what, 15 years to update this? And they didn't... But they don't update the PS1 classics. Oh, the classics. They are ISOs of the original games. Yeah, I understand. In the store. But we're not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so now they really wouldn't be able to do it. That's getting to another topic, but Konami is, like, crashing and burning. Really? Not as a company, because in Japan, they're way more diversified and successful yeah but their game cor- corp is gonna, going to go under completely Interesting. they're gonna they're gonna cut it loose well they're probably gonna bank- bankrupt and then just you know do like sell it probably somebody. they'll do a strategic bankruptcy or something yeah. just to end it it's funny big corporations even when they fail they don't fail yeah. <laughs> anyway so to finish off that topic i was serious like we're going to be doing like two a days and it's going to be an hour each and it's going to be very, very high intensity. He's going to sweat his ass off. Yep. And that's how you lose weight. Sweat the weight off. Like, uh, I'm going to say something that I've learned recently that sounds absolutely insane, which is if you ask somebody, how do you lose weight? How does your body actually lose weight? The answer is actually you breathe it out. So it's not that your body is burning anything. It's not that you're sweating the weight out it's that you're literally breathing out like that (laughs) i'm trying to make sure i make this make sense yeah Uh, i'll post a follow-up article but you're actually breathing out the calories so i i I believe it's the internal engine of the body 
as you um, as you convert um, calories to energy, you exhale carbon dioxide, and that's you actively losing calories. That's interesting. I never thought it looked like that. And it's like the it, it's it's way more than going to the gym and trying to be a like a bulky idiot. Like there, there's a lot of science here, and if you really believe that your body is the only one you get, like I feel so strongly that you should like really make sure that you take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, we'll cut. That'll be a fitness episode, and you'll you'll have to do a uh, follow-up article. Like an article. Yeah. Just kind of do all that, and then we'll continue. Fucking a! Jump on top of this thing. <laughs>